coming up on a newscast. South Korea successfully conducted a test flight of a solid fuel space launch vehicle. This comes nine months after its first test of the homegrown rocket. South Korean health officials announced new travel restrictions for China. Measures are also devised to prevent citizens from stocking up on full medication. Former President Lee Myung-bak returned home after receiving a special pardon. He apologized to the people for causing concern. Hello, we'll be wrapping up the week well. I'm Daniel Che here to bring the latest. Let's begin with our top story. South Korea successfully conducted a test flight of a solid fuel space launch vehicle. With the latest updates, we have our Yi Dae-yeon standing by on the line for us. dae do fill us in. Right, Daniel. As you just said, a test flight of a solid fuel space launch vehicle was successfully conducted at around 6.50 p.m., nine months after the homegrown rocket's first test. After the flight, the defense ministry said that this was a subsequent test after the first in March, while saying that more will be carried out in the coming years. Back in March this year, the state-run Agency for Defense Development carried out the first test of the domestically developed solid fuel space rocket at a testing site in Tan County, 150 kilometers southwest of Seoul, to confirm its capabilities. The rocket is designed to put a small satellite into a low orbit for surveillance operations. Compared with liquid fuel space vehicles, solid fuel ones have a more simplified structure and are more cost-effective to launch. Seoul's space rockets project gained momentum after Seoul and Washington agree last year to lift the missile range guidelines that have restricted South Korea from developing or possessing ballistic missiles with a maximum range greater than 800 kilometers. Meanwhile, some citizens across the country had previously reported that there was an unidentified flying object in the sky, but turned out that this was the test flight. The ministry said that officials had earlier prepared safety-related measures for in the air and out at sea, but was not able to notify citizens in advance due to military security matters. That's all I have for this hour. Back to you, Daniel. All right, Ryan, thank you for those updates. We appreciate it. Moving on to other stories now, President Yoon ordered the finance ministry to find ways to provide more tax breaks for local chip makers. This is according to his deputy spokesperson ahead of an extraordinary meeting of the cabinet to confirm a series of tax revisions approved by parliament. Lawmakers have raised the amount companies can deduct from their taxes for investments in semiconductors and other key tech to 8 percent. But this is far less than the 20 percent sought by the People Power Party. The South Korean leader expressed regret that legislators did not discuss more fully the suggestions of the Special Committee on Semiconductors, and also that the highest corporate tax rate was not lowered as much due to objections from the main opposition bloc. Washington saw a strong backlash against the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. Now, the U.S. Treasury Department is indicating that consumers may be able to get tax credit by leasing the cars, which would be a win-win. Ian Jin has the latest. The U.S. Treasury Department announced new guidelines for the Inflation Reduction Act on Thursday, saying that electric vehicles leased by consumers can qualify for up to $7,500 U.S. dollars in commercial clean vehicle tax credits starting January 1st. This is a change to the act which passed in August that had put an end to the same consumer tax credits for electric vehicles assembled outside of North America. Ahead of the Treasury's latest announcement, the South Korean government had urged the Treasury to interpret commercial clean vehicles broadly to include rental cars, leased vehicles and vehicles purchased for use in ride-share fleets and also asked that budget restrictions not be imposed on commercial vehicle tax credits through 2025. We are looking for ways to minimize the problem in discussion with the White House in time for the Treasury guidance scheduled for the end of the year. The IRA stipulates that beginning in 2023, to receive the credit, 40 percent or more of the value of the critical minerals in the vehicle's batteries must be extracted or processed in North America or a country with which the U.S. has a free trade agreement in place, with that percentage rising 10 percent each year. This comes amid efforts to phase out materials and components sourced from China and to increase American manufacturing and assembly. But according to the latest guidelines, new electric vehicles purchased for commercial use, such as leasing, are eligible for the tax credit as long as they are produced by a qualified manufacturer and as long as the EV purchase is not made for resale purposes. This announcement is a win for South Korea as it means that EVs assembled outside of North Korea can now qualify for the tax credit. 
But there are strict stipulations to the tax credit eligibility, restricting companies looking for loopholes. EVs may not qualify for the tax credit if they are leased for a period equivalent to 80 to 90 percent of the vehicle's life, or if the contract allows the purchase of the vehicle at a discounted price at the end of the lease. Ian Jin, Arirang News. Consumer inflation in South Korea came in at 5.1 percent, the highest annual rate in over two decades, which means the BOK will likely keep raising rates in the new year. Here's Shin se with a breakdown of the figures. South Korea's consumer prices grew at the fastest pace in more than two decades in 2022. This came due to soaring raw material and energy prices following the outbreak of war in Ukraine. According to data from Statistics Korea on Friday, consumer prices rose 5.1 percent on year in 2022, accelerating from a 2.5 percent jump the previous year. It is also the steepest on year rise after a 7.5 percent spike in 1998 in the wake of the Asian financial crisis. The reading is in line with the finance ministry's expectations. The 2022 jump was mostly led by war-induced price increases in petroleum products, electricity and gas. The war that broke out earlier this year has resulted in disruptions to global energy supplies. By item industrial goods increased by almost 7 percent, of those petroleum products soared over 22 percent on year. Prices of electricity, gas and water jumped 12.6 percent, the highest for over a decade. Core inflation, which excludes volatile food and oil prices, rose 4.1 percent on year. Meanwhile, in December, consumer prices were up 5 percent compared to a year ago. This marks the eighth consecutive month for increases to hit 5 percent or above. Though down from a peak of 6.3 percent in July, the figure still hovers way above the central bank's target of 2 percent. As for the inflation outlook for 2023, the Bank of Korea expects it to remain above 5 percent in the coming month, but gradually ease to average 3.6 percent for the whole year. The finance ministry announced its estimate last week, saying inflation would average at 3.5 percent next year. Despite inflation slowing down, an economist says it is not yet time for the Bank of Korea to consider backing off on monetary tightening, at least not until the first half of 2023. For Korea, because we're a small open economy, we need to follow the U.S. interest rate somewhat in order to keep the international financial market in the United States. So they're expected to keep on raising their interest rates uh, until the first half of the year, and Korea will probably have to follow their trends. Shin se Arirang News. Electricity rates are going up in the new year by a record high amount, nearly 10 percent. This will help address the huge deficits at the nation's power company. It increases the increases for the first three months of the, of the next year, with more possible hikes to come. Am Jung zooms in on the changes. South Korea will raise electricity rates for 2023 Q1 by its largest margin in over 40 years. The Minister of Trade, Industry and Energy announced on Friday that from January 1st, electricity bills will rise by 9.5 percent from the current rate. Rates will go up for both consumer and industrial use by about 13 won, or roughly one U.S. cent per kilowatt hour, the highest raise since 1981. This follows a 2.51 rise in the fourth quarter of this year. The changes are made to address unprecedented losses the state-run utility faces amid soaring fuel costs. Soaring global energy costs have not been reflected in domestic rates, so the Korea Electric Power Corporation suffered losses of 6 trillion won last year. The company is expecting losses of more than 30 trillion won this year. With this, the domestic energy supply is at risk. It is also affecting the bond market and pressuring the South Korean economy as a whole. Bills for a four-person household will rise by an average of roughly three U.S. dollars per month to result in a monthly bill of around $45. The government says it'll provide relief for the socially vulnerable people who might feel the impact more than others. 
For those who are more vulnerable to the changes in energy costs, including recipients of basic living funds, the government will provide subsidies like energy vouchers and bricket coupons. Also, we will cooperate with utility companies to provide discounts on electricity and gas bills. For the 3.5 million households that are classed as socially vulnerable, electricity costs will stay at the current rate for an average monthly use of 313 kilowatt hours. Considering the burden of soaring heating and electricity fees, gas bills will stay frozen for the first three months of next year, but the government will review how the increases will be applied in the following quarters. Om Jiyong, Arirang News. Amid growing uncertainty as outlook is bleak for the global economy, the Fed is expected to continue monetary tightening, although the pace might slow down. Some experts believe there are some positives to look forward to. Shin Ha-yong provides a glimpse of what to expect. World economic growth outlooks are facing growing uncertainty due to geopolitical risks and soaring inflation. The OECD projects the world economy to grow 2.2 percent next year. The International Monetary Fund has also forecast that the global GDP growth will slow from this year's 3.2 percent to 2.7 percent. Amid declining demand, it also downgraded the growth in global trade volume to 2.5 percent, down by 1.9 percentage points from its previous estimation. If 2022 was a year of aggressive monetary tightening from central banks to tame soaring inflation, experts forecast that 2023 will be a year where the global economy will suffer from the aftermath. As central banks around the world have been focusing on their own inflation rather than economic growth, interest rates are less likely to drop. Currently, household debt and corporate debt have been increasing, leading them to suffer or possibly even go bankrupt next year. The U.S. Federal Reserve has recently slowed its rate hike. However, it has hinted that rates could top 5 percent next year, saying that more work is needed in terms of price stability. One professor pinpointed inflation in the U.S. as being the one to keep tabs on as it impacts global monetary policy as a whole. Also, higher inflation in the U.S. could raise the cost of imports. However, there are still some positives the world can look forward to regarding the economy. Prices of crude oil and other raw materials have been decreasing as demand drops under the global economic slowdown. This could bring down inflation in the U.S., leading to an end of rate hikes and helping the world economy recover. He also said that the COVID-19 situation in China will be crucial after it reopened its borders and scrapped its strict quarantine measures, and that it will likely boost global demand like consumer spending, corporate investment and exports. Shin Ha-yong, Arirang News. Former President Lee Myung-bak delivered a brief apology as he returned home after receiving a special pardon. He was discharged from hospital where he received treatment for chronic illnesses. The ex-conservative leader said he is deeply sorry for causing concern to the people. The 81-year-old was pardoned by President Yoon on Wednesday while serving a 17-year prison term for bribery and embezzlement. His remaining prison term of about 15 years and about $6.5 million of unpaid fines are canceled. President Yoon wished he a quick recovery and asked him to do his bit for the country. Local health authorities announced measures to restrict some travel from China, which is seeing a surge in COVID-19 infections. South Korea will require tests on arrival and stop issuing short-term visas. Song Yoo-jin explains further. South Korean health officials have announced new travel restrictions for China that will take effect in the new year. Starting next Monday, anyone traveling from China will be required to take a PCR test within one day of arrival. And from Thursday, they must also show proof of a negative PCR test taken within two days or a rapid antigen test taken at least one day before departure. This will stay in place until the end of February. These rules are one of the most stringent countermeasures taken against Beijing after it eased its zero-COVID policies. There is a reason for this. South Korea is geographically very close to China, and we have a lot of people-to-people -people exchanges. We were also one of the first countries that was hit by its COVID outbreak back in 2020. So we need testing mandates and close monitoring. 
Not only this, but passengers will have to enter their contact information into the Q code or the quarantine information pre-entry system before boarding. The government will also suspend issuing short-term visas for Chinese nationals from Monday to the end of January. Except for diplomats, public officials, key business and humanitarian purposes. There will be no more additional flights from China for the time being. For effective screening, all flights heading to South Korea from China will have to land at Incheon International Airport and not the smaller Kimpo Airport. This includes Jeju Airport as it will suspend direct flights from China. All this is to prevent another COVID wave or even a new variant entering the country. South Korea's total imported cases from China so far this month jumped more than 14-fold from last month. Health authorities say they'll do all they can. They're considering extending or even strengthening the rules if the virus situation becomes severe. Song Yujin, Arirang News. And to be prepared against people here in the nation purchasing excess amounts of medications like those for flu or cold in fear of possible influx of the virus from China, the Korean government will take measures to ensure individuals cannot excessively stockpile or hoard such items. Moving on to other stories now, South Korea's foreign minister and the chief of representative, repre, the chief representative of Japan's Komeito party, rather, Yamaguchi Natsuo, met in Seoul on Friday and discussed the mutual interest issues. Park Jin highlighted efforts made by both governments to improve bilateral ties since the start of the UN administration, including the two summits in September and November. Calling Japan Korea's closest neighbor that shares universal values, the minister called for joint efforts in tackling regional and global challenges. The Japanese diplomat welcomed South Korea's Indo-Pacific strategy announced earlier this week. Stray Kids topped the latest Spotify album charts. The Korean boy group's new digital album, Skids Replay, was number one in Top Albums debut global chart as well as Top Albums debut USA. This is the first time that the band reached the apex of those charts. The new album was released last week and includes songs such as Fam, Deep End and Ice Cream, which were written by the members themselves. Stray Kids' second world tour, Maniac, will continue next year. They'll head to Thailand, Singapore, and Australia. As we inch closer to the new year, there are several changes people should be aware of. The Korean age system will be abolished, and the country's food expiration labeling system will be different. Che min -jung tells us more. A new year for a new age. South Koreans will become a year or two younger from June 2023. This comes as the country announced an official change to its age counting system, where a person is aged one on the day they are born and become a year older on January 1st. This means that those born on December 31st are aged two the very next day. However, from the coming June, South Korea will follow the international age counting system, where a person gets older on their birthday. Also starting January 1st, parents who have children aged 0 to 1 year old will receive benefits of around 350 to 700,000 won per month. That's around 280 to 555 U.S. dollars. Meanwhile, the government will ease tax burdens for homeowners. For people who own multiple homes, property holding taxes will be levied on apartments that exceed 900 million won, around $714,000. Currently, this is only applied to properties with a value of over 600 million won. For single homeowners, the base will be raised to 1.2 billion won from 1.1 billion. While first-time homebuyers will be exempt from acquisition taxes of up to 2 million won, around $1,585. And in supermarkets, the shelf life of food is about to get a bit longer. This is because expiration dates are set to be replaced with use-by dates as opposed to sell-by dates. Until now, the mark dates were for the sellers, not consumers. But from 2023, they will tell buyers up to what point a product can be safely consumed. Shelf lives will become 20 to 50 percent longer than before. Other than that, the minimum wage will also rise to 9,621, around $7.62 per hour. Prices for gasoline are also expected to rise by 99 won per liter as the government is set to reduce tax cuts for gasoline from the current 37 percent to 25 percent. Choi min -dong, Arirang News. Many in Korea rely on superstition and fortune-telling to gain insight about what's in store for the future. In accordance with the zodiac signs, this new year is closely linked to a black rabbit. Kim Hyun-sung has the full story. 
On a short drive around Seoul, it's easy to spot images of rabbits. These displays of rabbits are often holding bags of luck. This is a city getting ready for the new year. These are the 12 animals in the Korean zodiac. Each animal represents a year in a 12-year cycle. 2023 is a year of the rabbit, and our ancestors believe that the new year will bring fortune that resembles the characteristics of that year's animal. This culture dates back thousands of years in East Asia, but people still follow it today in Korea. There are 12 animals, and each year they're paired up with one of the colors that represent the five elements of the universe. 2023 is a year of the black rabbit. Fortune tellers use these five elements and the zodiac animal as a base to predict the future. Like this shaman, who says that 2023 is going to resemble a rabbit burrowing into its own rabbit hole. It will be a good year to focus on yourself and things you can do within your home rather than outside. There's going to be a strong tendency for people to fulfill themselves by meditating or self-improvement rather than going out to find happiness. In Korea, there are also people who explore the future and destiny by looking at statistical findings rather than supernatural forces. This is known as Myeongli, or the four pillars of destiny. We have statistically compiled some of the reoccurring themes in human nature and made them into a theoretical study. Through his study, he forecasts fierce competition between countries coming up in the next year. He also forecast a drought. It may be a year where countries collide into each other with fierce competition. Some may brush off fortune-telling as hogwash, but many in Korea see it as a useful tool to get them prepared for the new year. I seek out fortune-telling around the start of the year because I think it serves as a good driving force in life. I don't completely trust it, but I take it in as advice. I've been going to see a fortune teller every year for the past three years and they've always told me good news. I use it as personal motivation so that I live a better life than what my reading has told me. Because if it helps people leap for success, why not believe in the power of the rabbit? Kim Hyun-sung, Arirang News. The extreme cold that gripped South Korea for the past few days will take a brief respite. For the last day of the year and for New Year's Day on Sunday, no major cold is in the forecast. Daytime conditions will stay in the positive range across the capital region for this entire weekend. And due to stagnant atmospheric conditions, western parts of the country will see high concentrations of fine dust. Do expect poor air quality for these homage pollen area as well as the provinces of Chungcheongdo and Jeollabukdo. For those in the area, make sure to have a mask that can filter out the dust particles. The rest of the nation will be seeing decent air quality. In the regions, we'll see minus figures for the morning. So I'll be starting off at minus 5 degrees tomorrow. Expect wide temperature gaps as highs will be rising significantly. So we'll get up to 5 degrees. Chuncheon to Daegu and Gyeongju will be reaching 6 degrees Celsius. And colder temperatures will make a return next week with those plunging to minus 8 degrees for Monday. That's all for now and here are the weather conditions around the world. And that's all from us. As always, thank you for watching.